Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Today we're going to take a look at the question, do GFCIs require a ground wire to function? You know, in the early days, I'll be honest, this is one of the things that it was really hard for me to wrap my mind around. I mean, it's even in the name, right? Ground fault. So we're going to learn about this in this video and hopefully it will add a little bit of value to you. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Marquette. They are the only customer relationship management tool that we recommend. And you guys know I would never recommend anything to you that I would not use myself or recommend myself. They are a one-stop solution for estimating, invoicing, and everything in between. Stick around. Later in the video, we're going to learn a little bit about one of my favorite functions of Marquette. Until then, let's get to it. All right, before we dive into it, let's explain what we're even talking about here. So whether we're talking about a breaker style, a receptacle style, or even one of these gizmos, we're talking about Class A GFCI devices. So in order for it to even be called a GFCI device, it has to be Class A. And a Class A device is one that trips in the 4 to 6 milliamp range. And we've heard that thrown around throughout our career, but what does it really mean? A thousand milliamps is equivalent to one amp just to show you how low the thresholds are for safety four to six milliamps would be that small of a percentage of one amp so with that being said these are the type devices that we're talking about today when we're explaining how they work and these are the ones that we're going to be using most often when out in the field all right y'all i remember the exact day that i found out the answer to this question it was a Wednesday, it was 70 degrees, there was a northeast wind blowing at about five miles an hour. I had just left my favorite restaurant, no, I'm just kidding. But I do remember the feeling I felt when my mind was blown and I found out that you do not need a ground wire for a GFCI to work properly. Now, I discovered this when I was working on two-wire circuits in homes, old two-wire Romex, and I was learning the five ways to satisfy open ground, and I found out that you could satisfy open ground by installing a GFCI breaker or a GFCI receptacle, and that's when I had to get the learning curve that you do not need the equipment grounding conductor for this device to work properly. I do kind of wish they would change the name, though, because it doesn't really meet the definition of a ground fault, although those are one of the ways that the current could be leaking, but it's really a current leakage device. And a very simplified way to think about this is that a GFCI is like a counting machine. If there are so many amps coming in on the hot, there better be so many amps going out on the neutral. And that's just a simplified way for me to think about it and really understand it. So let's take this 120 volt circuit. We have a line to neutral load, and let's say that we have our attachment plug, and we plug in a 12 amp appliance. Well, it is an electrical certainty that if we have 12 amps coming in the hot, that we need to have 12 amps coming out on the neutral going back to the source. But what if we were to add something else in this circuit, like a human or a water puddle or a metal piece of equipment or some other type of leakage? Well, that would alter the current. We would end up having more amps on the hot and not the same amount of amps going out on the neutral. And if that current leakage is in the four to six milliamp range, it's going to shut off the circuit. So what it's doing is it's sensing for an imbalance in the circuit. If there's 12 amps coming in on the hot, there better be 12 amps going in on out on the neutral. And you know, likewise. So the whole point is, is that it is in a sense counting the current 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12.1, 12, 12 or it'd be 12.1, 12, 12 going out on the neutral. Then it's going to shut that circuit off and save someone's life. Now let's take a look at the 240 volt circuit. And we have our attachment plug here. Let's say we use a dryer or a range or something like that. So a simplified explanation is, is that we should have on line to line, we should have 12 amps coming in if that's the load, and we should have 12 amps going out. And if there's any discrepancy, it's going to shut the circuit off and save someone's life, likely save the piece of equipment. Now, there are other types of GFCI protection out there. We're not going to get into those today, just the ones that we deal with the most. So in this case as well, you do not need the ground wire to function at all. And I kind of wish they would change the name of it from a ground fault because it doesn't really meet the definition. Now let's take a look at the question, does a 240 volt circuit need the neutral for a GFCI to function properly? Do you have to have the neutral wire or can you GFCI protect a straight line to line load. Let's check it out. 
Today I want to show you the Marcate app, and specifically I want to look at the work orders, which is the feature that I am most impressed with. Now you can create manual work orders, or anytime that you send an estimate, as soon as they accept it, it automatically creates the work order for you. So let's click on this work order here. So if I want to edit this work order, I can edit it right up at the top. It shows me the description, lets us know these are the instructions to the staff. And one thing I love about this whole program is it doesn't show your employees the prices. It only shows them what you want them to do. Let's say I want to edit this work order. And this is my favorite feature is you can do checklist for your employees. So let's select the checklist that I want to do for this job. I want the before you leave and the when you arrive. I've created these and you can customize your own. So when we're done here, we're going to save it. We're going to back up and save. Now, when the employee gets the work order, they scroll down and they then they have to do these checklists before they can leave the job. So when you arrive, I want you to clock into the job and then they'll be able to actively click on it. I want them to greet the customer and I want them to go over the work order with the customer. Then before they leave, I want them to restore and test all power, make sure the job is clean, and then if project is complete, I want them to receive payment if that's how you do it with your company. And then I want them to clock out from the project before they start their van. And it's so awesome that you can customize these however you want and the employees have to perform them before they leave the job site. So this is Marcate. It's an epic CRM, customer relationship management tool. You can look in the link in the description below. And if you sign up through that link, it helps the channel. And also it allow you to have a free two week trial to check it out. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, I got to be honest with you. This was another one that was a major learning curve for me out in the field. So when we're dealing with 240 volt circuits, maybe a hot tub, and you know we have this big honking breaker with the pigtail attached to it. Now, this one over here to the right is a smaller version, but you, you get the same point. And you think in your mind, this has to have a neutral for it to function. And I do want to note that if you're ever installing one of these breakers, you do have to have a neutral present in that panel in order to plug this pigtail in. It cannot ride back on the ground wire, and it does need that pigtail for the GFCI um, to function properly. So with that being said, but it does not need that uh, the neutral from the load side for it to function properly. You only need the two line conductors. Now, if you if you have a neutral on that circuit, then you need to install it and wire it to the breaker. But if you don't, let's say you had a hot tub that was a straight 240 volt device with no neutral wire needed, then you would just land the two hots to the breaker and not land a neutral to the breaker. It doesn't need it. But if you had a hot tub that required a four wire setup, then you would land the neutral to the breaker. But in any event, you must land the neutral pigtail from the breaker to a neutral bar with a neutral. So in the same way, it senses from line to line. If there's 12 amps coming in, there better be 12 amps going out. So you do not need the neutral prong in order for the GFCI to function. Now you may need it for your circuit to be correct. You may need it for everything to be safe, but you do not need it for the actual GFCI to function. So if you had a straight 240 volt appliance that did not require a neutral, you would just not pull a neutral over. You would land the pigtail of the GFCI breaker onto the bus bar you would land the two hots to the 240 volt breaker and you would be set and that is the end of it so I hope that this video added a little bit of value to you and that you do not need the equipment grounding conductor at all for a GFCI to function properly on a 120 volt setup you also do not need it on a 240 volt setup a three-phase setup it does not matter it's not needed now that is one of the paths that current could be leaking on and that's fine if there was a true ground fault but it's not needed for the device to function properly i am the electrical code coach and my bargain is that this video will add a little bit of value to you and you will in turn add value to others let's go ahead and get to it